Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be working on a 2007 Porsche Cayman. We're changing out the power steering rack. Mine is leaking, so it is in need of replacement. Before we get started, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up to help with the YouTube algorithm. And then we'll get started here in just a moment. This video is going to be a little bit different because I don't know all the tools that we'll need just yet. So I'm going to show you as I go. Make sure you get your car jacked up. Those are the jack points. I usually jack mine up in the rear, put the jack stand here in the front. This is a 19 millimeter bit. So, if you look at where my lower, I mean, I'm sorry, my inner and outer tie rod arm is, right here where the lower boot bellow is located, it's very wet. If you look around it down here, it's super wet as well, and it shouldn't be. So that's a pretty good indicator that you're going to need a new power steering rack, unfortunately. You can either rebuild yours or just get a used one. In my case, I got a used one, and we'll go through it here in just a moment. We have to take the, this outer and the inner arm off so i'm gonna go ahead and get these cracked loose you'll notice that my inner tie rod and the i'm sorry inner tie rod and the outer tie rod it's super loose this should feel very tight so it's no good but let's go ahead and get that off so the two crest wrenches you'll need is going to be a 15 16 and a 13 16. feed this through the other side. Hmm. It's on there pretty tight. Alright. to the lower control arm right here this is a 17 millimeter Oops. just want to make sure that seats down properly before you crank it and get my ratchet Now we're going to use this tool right here. This end is a 19 millimeter bit. It's going to go like that. Usually I would be kind of careful on this if I was trying to save the outer tie rod, but I'm not. I'm going to go ahead and replace it. Okay. So you see how loose mine is? It is done. When you back this off, just count how many turns you're loosening it with. That's going to be the same amount that you're going to use to tighten. So, for example, if you loosen it out 10 times to tighten it, you're going to put it back in 10 times and then secure the anchor nut up here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and so forth. So for my example, mine was 26 before it came off. Now, take this clamp off right here. You just take some pliers. Oops. 
super oily. Hopefully you can see it. This clamp right here. I want to back that nut off. This nut is a 21 millimeter. You can do it by hand. I'm just doing this so it's faster. There's one more clamp here all the way to the very back of the end of this bellow. That's the inner tie rod end. I'm going to show you what it looks like right here so you have an idea. There's a loop in there. You just put your flathead screwdriver in and then just give it a twist and it should come right off. Oops. Like that. See, when you twist in, it comes right off. And again, that's for the inner tie rod end where the be uh, beginning of the bellow is. Once you get that inner clamp off, you can start pulling this boot off. It's going to leak power steering everywhere, I'm sure. Yep, there it goes. It's leaking everywhere. You want to wipe it off your coolant lines as soon as possible. I'm just going to go ahead and throw a rag in here just to help soak some of it up. Now we're going to go to the front and we're going to drop the belly pan. So you know, notice where this belly pan is right here, what I'm pointing to? I already went ahead and loosened all of the Torx. It's a Torx 25. You just loosen it up and then you're, we're going to drop this pan here in just a moment just so it's laying on the ground. Now we're going to get our inner tie rod and tool removal unit. This is the size I'm going with. It's a one and one fourths. I'm going to put this on. Whoops. If I can reach it. All right. <clears throat> Get that snug on there. Get this tool on here. All right. I'm a big fan of this tool, by the way. It's awesome. Take this off and I want to back it out. Okay, take out your inner tie rod in. This is not an endorsement, but and I don't have an affiliate link, but I really am a big fan of this tool. Mine's on Am I got mine on Amazon for about 80 bucks. I saw this on a D-Race garage. So before we pull off the actual steering rack, I'm gonna go ahead and drain some of my power steering fluid just so hopefully it's not as messy under the car so obviously to do that you want to pump your trunk I already went ahead and opened up my lid if you don't know how to do this I'll leave a description for uh, a video I've already done on this when I was changing out my air filter box here it shows you how to remove this lid but the fluid we're going to be draining from right there That's how I'm going to do mine. I'll speed through this though. I don't want to bore you. 
So now I'm about to remove the steering rack for us. And um, I don't know if this is actually the right way to do this. I'm just looking at some things online and this is kind of what I'm seeing people do, but this is just a workout band and then a weight. What we're trying to do is keep the steering wheel from moving. Again, I don't know if this is the best method, so if you have a better idea, let me know in the comment section so the group could benefit from it. So we're about to remove the power steering line along with the clamp that holds the lines in, lines in place. You're going to need a 8 millimeter Allen head like this along with an extension and then of course a breaker bar or some type of ratchet. The breaker bar is a little bit easier because it's on there pretty tight. Trying to get a flashlight on here for you. So this right here is the nut we're trying to loosen. It's an 8 millimeter Allen head. This should pull right down as a clamp that holds these lines in place. boy in right there. I know that looks a lot easier than it was. I had to use a breaker bar just to give you a heads up. It's on there pretty tight. Just going to back that out. Okay, this is what it looks like. Put it somewhere safe. In a moment, we're going to pull out this, these uh, pressure lines for the power steering, but I'm not going to pull it out just yet. If you look right above it, oh, let me reposition the camera. If you look right above it, you'll notice this little bolt right here with the red on it. Right there, I'm pushing it. That's going to be a 13 millimeter nut. This holds on to the knuckle. We're going to need to take this nut off too. You want to back that all the way out. I need a little more space. So this is what that little nut looks like. This That was in this little knuckle up top. It looks like there's some blue Loctite on it. So I'm going to make sure to put Loctite on it once we uh, fasten it back in as well. They're loose enough right now where you can just pull them straight out like that. See? And I'm going to get a bucket to catch all that power steering fluid. So now we're going to be removing the two nuts that are holding on the steering rack onto the car. It's a 15 millimeter bit. So from under the front of the car, right under it, when you go all the way to the back, they're going to be marked in red. So there's that first one right here. And the second one, follow that same rail down there, right there. Back those both out. Again, it's a 15 millimeter bit. Looks like there's Loctite on it, so I'll make sure to put Loctite when I fasten them back in. Back over to the driver's side again. 
I'm going to see where we're at to see if we can go ahead and get this bad boy taken off. I'm going to take a flathead screwdriver just kind of pry this off softly and slowly. something bigger to wedge uh, pry that off to give you a heads up I was able to get that little knuckle off I just pushed it forward and then uh, it's actually dangling Oops. right up there so I expect that this should just come right out now I just kind of maneuver it out it's just awkwardly big so I'm gonna go ahead and maneuver it out now so I'm attempting to take this off still there's a not a lot of space. I'm going to try to lower this front um, sway bar bushing clamp right here because I think that'll give me just enough room to, for this to clear. This is a 15 millimeter bit, so back it all the way out. So I'm thinking and hoping once I back this out, I'll have enough clearance. Gotta put the camera down. Here's that screw I took off. It looks like there's some Loctite on it, so I'll make sure to put some back on when I fasten it back in. I'm actually going to take this opportunity to go, go ahead and replace the uh, bushings as well since I have extras. So I pretty much got mine out right here. I'm going to, I can pull it straight out. Turn this. It's pretty much loose. I'm going to pull it straight out, but I'm going to show you where I got, um, where I got stuck. It's on the other side. So on the passenger side, my hold up, get a flashlight in here. My hold up, this little bar right there. It was just getting stuck on it. So I had to get a big flathead screwdriver and just kind of push it forward as I continue to pull on the other side before it would not get stuck. It would be easier with two people, but I don't have two people, so I just, uh, that's where I got held up at. Thank goodness. That I can say, whoops. Right there. Was not fun at all. It was actually terrible. <laughs> I would go ahead and take the off take this opportunity to uh, get some brake cleaner and just clean up your oily messes in there before we go to our next task. And here's my old top one. This is my replacement on the bottom. You're gonna want to hit. You need to get a, an alignment, regardless, but you want to at least get as close as possible. There's a notch right here. You want to turn it. Don't turn your original, but turn your replacement to the same positioning, so that's somewhat aligned. So I'm I'm actually gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. I'm trying to keep it as short as possible, but I took you through the process of removing the steering rack. Again, this is my old one right here. This is the top one. To reinstall everything, it's the exact same process, but pretty much everything in reverse. Absolutely make sure you check your torque settings. Um, when you fasten, put all your fasteners back in, I don't have all the values on hand, unfortunately, so I actually have to look that up as well. If you know what it is, um, feel free to leave it in the comment section for the group. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video right here. If you like it, make sure you uh, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and I'm, uh, I'll see you in the next one.